ladies and gentlemen, back on another edition of Need Nothing Filtered with myself, Kenya Martin, and yours truly, J.D. Kiss, the is co-host. The we here, Need Nothing Filtered. You ready, yeah. big bro? I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Let's get it. <laughs> NBA trades, man. A lot went on last Thursday. Like the most movement ever. Uh, I think it was 46 different players moved. Really? Um, yeah, that's a lot of movement, man. Yeah, it's a lot of movement on trade. Yeah, because I did, a, um, I had a show I did. I did a trade deadline show. I think I did pretty good. I sound like I know what I was talking about a little bit, man. This might need to pay me. Definitely do. <laughs> you definitely do. <laughs> no, but yeah, so some of the big, so Victor Oladipo went to Miami. To Miami. Last, like, last, that was like the 25th hour joke. The last that was the minute. Last, yeah. Um, Pat Norman Riley Powell, still pulling strings. Norman Powell went to Portland. Portland. Um, yep. Gary Trent Jr. went to Toronto, which was a little weird to me because I thought Gary Trent was a I good fit. thought he fit. was having a breakout. Yeah, I thought yeah, from the bubble fit. to this year, I thought he was doing, I thought, I thought they was really, uh, Working them out to, to have a nice long future in Portland, but you know how the business goes. Yeah, but Toronto didn't want to pay Norman Powell, so that's what that was about more. Than, he even put some work in over there. I thought they would pay him too. You right? Yeah, that's like he crazy. was up this summer, so he unrestricted this summer. So okay. somebody gonna have to pay him. So Toronto, I guess they feel they didn't have the money to pay him after paying um Siakam and and Fred and now yeah. uh, Cal still on the books. So. Yeah, they had to make a move. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I guess. But yeah, that was a little weird. Um big fellow um Vucevic from um from Orlando. That was a shock to me. Right? Yeah, that yeah, was a shock. I thought he was the center. I thought he was one of the pillars of the team over there in Orlando. Yeah, he was getting Got- it done. Like multi year all star. Like we knew Gordon was on the block, but nothing. Yeah. Nothing was ever said about that. Like that was a like surprise. Me being in Chicago when the trade went down, um, it was excited. Like yeah. the people around there that I was yeah, doing they should be. Was, That's a yeah, damn was, good piece. Yeah, I, I I agree. I agree. Um, my bad. Uh, who else? Who else? Aaron moved? Gordon uh, and JaVale McGee went to Denver. Yeah, that's that's a good pickup for that's them. Great man. They got athletic. Yeah. So so that was my thing about last year um, that the Nuggets struggled in when they played the Lakers was athleticism. Mm-hmm. Like, so I think they got better in that regard. So they definitely helped themselves. Yeah. Um, who else? The Lakers added. Well, they didn't make any moves. They were trying to get Kyle Lyre. That fell through. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess they didn't want to give up. Um, Horton Tucker was the um, was the hold up. Oh, I guess okay. Toronto wanted him. And they was like, nah. <laughs> Cause the kid can play. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah, the kid can actually go. Like he in the city, Chicago kid. Like he go get he's he get it done. He on the Lakers? Yeah, number five, the Horton Tucker kid. Like he he don't play a lot because he plays small forward and they got that one guy that play that position. <laughs> um LeBron James. <laughs> so he don't get a lot. He of still clock. must be tough, though. If they don't want to deal with me, he got to be something oh, special. Yeah, yeah. 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 and he's young. He's like 20. He like, oh, yeah. Yeah, he can go, kiss. Like, I saw him up at the gym. He was taking turns boning people. Like, yo, <laughs> calling. Yeah, you give him some props, that means he oh, can yeah. go. You he say he can go, he really can go. He had a favorable matchup. They come set the pick and roll. He waving the pick off. Like, no, nah, they just going to switch it. I like this matchup. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, he, yeah, he boning dude at the gym, like having his way. So yeah, that was the hold up in the trade. <laughs> That's ill. <laughs> yeah, but now, nah, um, but yeah, I just think it was, it was a lot of moving pieces that that. Oh, JJ Reddick went to Dallas. Yep, Aldridge. Aldridge went to the to the yeah, next buyout. Which, the buyout. Yeah, we're gonna get into that a little bit. Um, <laughs> It's that fuck that we can talk about it now. So, what's your feelings about that? I, I don't have no. I don't, it, it is what it is to me. Like they it didn't, didn't really. I, I didn't. It didn't really. I mean, you made me think Blake was just a wasn't nothing special about that. Yeah, because and I feel even though Allrich, I don't know what he's gonna give. I don't know. You know, I know he, he used he's to be solid. Like he's a solid pick and pop guy that you have to respect in that regard. Cause he uh-huh. gonna knock that shit down, you don't get over there. That's like a fact. 
he's not good defensively. He never has been. Um, Blake has never been a good defender, but he gives them a different dynamic. Dynamic, yeah. Um, I think they're one in the same right now. Mm. So that, that, that if, is, that if is they true. Can, if they can get what what the Lakers got out of JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard last year, if they can get that kind of productivity from DeAndre Combined, Jordan, yeah. DeAndre Jordan, Lamarcus Aldridge, and Blake and Griffin Blake, together. Yeah. If they can get them to do that, they'll be fine. Okay. Because they can only play one arm at a time. Mm-hmm. You're right. You can, actually, you can play. Yeah, because it. Yeah, you can't DJ, really play. You can't play Blake and Aldridge at the same time. No, they're horrible defensively. Like, yeah. yeah, that sh- that should be a disaster. At least you get some brim protection with DJ still. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? DJ going. DJ going. Yeah. Block, and he a lob rim. threat, and he's still a lob threat. You know what I'm yep. saying? So Lamarck is not a live threat. I don't know if, how much jumping Blake going to do if he Blake been dunking. Any. Blake got about three dunks since the last time we talked. <laughs> just, but, but like I said, he's not a live threat right now like he was once was. So, but yeah, but they get that kind of productivity out of them three bigs. Um, I think they'll be all right. Yeah. Because Blake is definitely a pick and pop guy. Lamarcus is a pick and pop guy. Um, yeah, that's DJ why he's still a professional a player because you you just that's ill. I never thought they they like one in the same. They, yeah, they got a very similar game. Yeah, so but yeah, but defensively they definitely struggle. Um, but yeah, so we'll see how that plays out. But I, yeah, it should be interesting, man. Um, the team that's not in it right now, I'm saying the Houston Rockets. I, I like the moves that the Rockets made. To be honest with you. Shipping, shipping Victor out. I like Avery. If Avery Bradley stays, Avery solid. I like Avery Bradley. I always and like Kelly, him. He play D. He played both sides of the ball. And Kelly Olynyk. I like him. He can right? shoot. I like DJ Augustine. Mm-hmm. DJ Wilson solid. kid been playing well for him. So I like the moves that they made, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, my young boy's still getting his clock. That's what matters. You know what I'm saying? No With doubt. all the moves they made, he's still getting his burn. So that's Let's important. Let's go, KJ. Let's work. go, baby. You know what I'm saying? So, But now, I like the moves the Rockets made. Like, ain't nobody talking about it because they next to last in the West and all that. They lost 20 straight. They're gearing up. They're gearing up. I, I like it. Like, I don't know who all is going to be there next year. Next year, yeah. You know but but right now, if, if, mo- if they bring most of these guys back, because they got they a lot of draft sh- picks next year. So it's, it's going to be interesting, group. man. Yeah. yeah, they got a solid group to pick from. I like Let's so, work with so Coach gotta, Salish, man. Yeah, if you got to pick pieces chance. from what they did, mm-hmm. I like them being able to pick pieces from the moves that they made in order to, to put a team together. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so. I think that, I still think they need a big, like a true big. Because mm-hmm. Christian Wood is a pick and pop guy. They need somebody who can, who can bang, who can yeah. hold bigger guys off. Protect you know the saying? rim, yeah, yeah, because that boy lighting his ass. Yeah. Um, he like to let that thing fly, so oh, he's yeah, no, gonna yeah, need yeah, somebody yeah. to back him. Yeah, you know, yeah, he need a real yeah. big. Yeah, yeah, he need a real big. So hopefully that's what they're looking for moving forward. But no, yeah, it's some, it was some good moves made, man. So the second half should be interesting. Moving into the playoffs should be interesting. Definitely. Um, yeah. So the tournament. The, the madness is real, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Some good games, man. Great like, games. That Bama UCLA game was incredible. Yeah, that was a good game. Dude, dude came off the bench, walk off three. Like he wasn't in the game before that. <laughs> All net. I said yeah. no. I was in the crib saying he ice cold. Oh, shoot that thing. He he, he, he let that thing go. Like he knew it was. Yeah. He knew what it was, man. I felt bad so, for him when they lost because he was no. one of the only seniors on the team. Yeah, but. He make that shot, right? He get in the game. So he start, he make that shot. They start him in overtime, right? He get fired in overtime, go to the line and miss two free miss throws. Bad. Free throws. Like, ho- oh, bad, though. Man. It wasn't even close. They were shooting <laughs> them things so hard yesterday. It was killing. Yeah. They was 11 for 20. Like, that was the game. that They missed 14 free throws. They was 11 Facts. for 25. Like, Facts. Yeah, you missed 14 free throws in the tournament. Yeah, you, you might not win, but. But yeah, so Elite Eight tonight. You got Oregon State, Houston, Arkansas, Baylor, UCLA, U- USC, and Michigan. Mm-hmm. 
some good bumps out here. Yeah, it's a great um, tournament. Especially I like Michigan. Like Michigan got a big ass team. Michigan is tough. I, I would have took Michigan's hands down if if one of the one of the guys is hurt. They still super tough. And I would have. Yeah, I would have had them pick. cleaning the board if they would have had uh, that if that if that kid wasn't hurt. I forget what his name is. If yeah. he was, if they had the full team healthy, yeah. I got them taking anybody. Down. I still got them going. I still yeah, got them making. One got them out there playing NBA defenses in college. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. So they they down and picking roles. They doing all kind of shit out there that other teams are not doing. So that's why they like that's why they tough to beat. They look, like you can see they look like they had some different training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calvin got Sampson got Houston looking something tough, too. Oh, yeah, no, they, yeah, they, your yeah, Oregon State got their hands full with them tonight. <laughs> That's a fact. Of, yeah, they got their hands full, but Baylor look good. Baylor's like my dog. I love, I just love them group of guys, how they yeah. play together, man. You know what I mean? I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of college basketball, Mike Woodson. Yep. My coach when I was with the Knicks got the Indiana job. It's his alma mater. Shout, shout out, out to, to Coach Woodson. Yep. Shout out to Woody, man. Like Woody, a good <laughs> coach, man. Like I don't, I don't know how Woody gonna be with kids though. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna have to tone I mean, it down some. Oh, huh? he gonna, yeah, cause Woody speak his mind. Like Woody, yeah. old school black man. Mm-hmm. Like Woody, Woody, Woody was good with us. We was vets. Yeah, because you understand, what, you can receive it the right way. Yeah, you can say whatever to me. Mm-hmm. You can say whatever to she. You can say whatever to Melo. You can say whatever to J Kid. You can say whatever to. I'm saying we had guys that Marcus can be Tyson mm-hmm. Chandler. Like you can say whatever to us. It don't. It don't. It's whatever. Like so, we've been around. I'm saying was, I would, brush it off. We yeah yeah, yeah. take it for what yeah, it's worth. Kids, yeah, you might crush kids, some in their spirits. Bit. Yeah, definitely, but. No, nah, but it's a good opportunity for him, man, to go to be a head coach again. Uh, uh-huh. He's on the staff with the Knicks right now, so I don't know if I, if he leave immediately or whatnot. But no, nah, it's a great opportunity for Woody, man. Me and Woody had a good rapport um, when I um, my tenure with the Knicks, man. I was sad to see him go and how it ended, but mm-hmm. I'm glad he got another opportunity, man, to be a head coach and. Hopefully this goes well and he can get back in the league if that's what he wants um, to be a head coach again, um, which yep. I'm pretty sure would be on his bucket list of things. But uh, it's a great opportunity for him, man. Shout out to Coach Woodson. Now you got to recruit. Like, now you got to – like, that's – like, you ask people that have been in both college and pros, like, what is the – like, the thing – like, coaching is coaching, but the recruiting part is – is like being on the road all the time, having to deal with kids and kids' parents and all that shit. They say like that's the, hard, that's the hardest yeah. part. That's the hardest part for it. Yeah, then somebody signing the players and you don't really have to deal with, I'm saying like nobody but the player. Like yeah, it could be, it could be a little different, man. Um, NBA Africa League starting up May 16th in Rwanda. Um, NBA yeah, they, Africa? Yeah, yeah. I had been heard about it. They got like um, like Africa. Like, it's like they got like a um, university kind of like a skills school over there. Mm. And when KJ Nim was at um, a tournament, they brought their team to the IMG situation. Yeah, no, nah, it was – yeah, no, nah, they they raising them. Yeah, they teaching them fundamentals of of the league because they, as you can see, if, a lot of them make it. Just, yeah. yeah, and they athletic. Yeah, yeah, they athletic. They can they learn fast, and they work and they play hard as fuck. So mm-hmm. all the time, and they don't know nothing else. You know what I'm saying? So you can tell, like I said, just to take me from I'm, I'm just from inner city. I played hard all the time. You can teach me to dribble and shoot. Can't teach me to play hard. I already do that. Yeah. So that's what they have coming into the situation. So, no, I think it's gonna be good. It's going. That's it's dope. Be a lot I think that's people. super dope. Yes, yeah, another stepping stone for basketball around the world. Um, that's super dope. Eh? Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Give them an opportunity, man. So I know I think it's gonna be good. Um, yeah. Starting May sixteenth in Rwanda. So that's fire. Looking out for that. Eh. Definitely be looking out for that, people. Like I think it's gonna be. 
It's going to be cool. Yeah, I think that's going to be super cool. NBA Africa. Wow. Look where this game's. Look how the game's evolved. Governor Cuomo for now is talking about finally signing a bill and legalizing marijuana in New York State. So is it going to be up for vote like it is in most places, or he just going? No, no, sign it's, the it's bill? going down now. It's just when they're going to do it because you know they could do it tomorrow, this week, or they could wait all the way to the last day of the year to yeah. stretch it to a year. So okay. you no, know, in New York. They gonna put yeah, because I know it was legal in Jersey already. I know Jersey voted on yeah, it. Yeah, Jersey already broke ground. Jersey yeah. already they laws. Well, they got they, dispensaries and all that yep, stuff and stuff. Jersey's you know, already so. up and running. So oh, they popping. So New York is just going across the bridge again. <laughs> yeah. So you know they they don't they start getting greedy. They 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 notice the money that Jersey is gonna get. So I guess yeah, they, they generate. They, they fix finally about to sign shit. that bill. Yeah. <laughs> Jersey over there fixing roads and shit. They like Jersey shit. Doing <laughs> good. Jersey about to turn up. Yeah, no, nah, I think it's dope, man. That that a place like New York, that they already, if I'm not mistaken, they one of the places that they decriminalized like um, the, the marijuana part already, didn't they? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you get a disappearance ticket. Uh, yeah, just less. Some of the bullshit they used to put you through is not, you know, right now is they decriminalized it. So for a joint. like I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you go through the whole system for one for a joint and have to hire a lawyer and <laughs> it'd be similar to a high profile case for yeah, something yeah. that's nothing <laughs> at the end of the day when it gets in front of the judge. But yeah, now they yeah. eliminated all that. Uh yeah, nah, I think it's dope. You know, hopefully we get that bill signed. Sooner they than later, letting some of these people out, man, that's out. locked up, yep. that's locked up out the way, man, and for marijuana possession and for simple marijuana possession and stuff like that, man. Like, yes, sir. Yeah, I just think, yeah, I think it's, I think that's what's taking so long because they know eventually they're gonna have to let some of them people out for some of them crimes they was overcharged for for marijuana. So, yeah, like, that's gonna you, come, that's gonna come even. <laughs> Like if you got bill. caught with a half a ton of weed, then like now that's something else for yeah, to talk about. <laughs> but, but if you, if you, a little recreation, you know, you, yeah, a little, yeah, come on, come on man. Like, man. Let's be honest. No, but I think it's dope, man, that they follow in suit with a lot of other surrounding other states, states yeah. surrounding yeah. states around them. You know what I'm saying like yeah. it's, it's 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 popular around them and other parts of the country. So, and it's generating a lot of income. Is it's employing people. Um, jobs are needed still. Yep. Helping a lot of people with health issues. Yeah, a lot of that, man. I just think it's dope that they, yeah, they're on board now, man. Now if we can get Texas to do the same. Uh, <laughs> Y'all gonna come late. Y'all gonna come at the end too. You know, they're figuring yeah. out the most possible way to tax it. The most, each state gonna have their own little yeah, twist of how they. Yeah, but each state's different. But I think if you just follow like take bits and pieces from the best states that's doing it. Like, doing you know, it. like, yeah. like California so strict as far as the laws and all that. I heard like, like far you gotta, like every I, every T has to be dotted. Yeah, you got it. Your paperwork better be right. Or they come. Yeah. 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 They're closing you down. So I just think if you other places take bits and pieces from here and Seattle and, Colorado and mm -hmm. Jer you know I'm saying other places that's not in Oklahoma. You can be like, able to get your infrastructure. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So other states have proven that it works. Yep. Crime so, rates down. Yeah. Finances up. Yeah. Employment People are talking certain, to each yeah. other. Employment is up. Yeah. Um, opioid um, overdoses are down. Down. So. Yeah, because people, yeah, they, when, they, um, when you got access to certain things, you don't got to go looking for other things. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. there's some strong strands out here. That Facts. That'll take sure your that, socks off. What? <laughs> 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 hey, you right where you need to be. If not, go go eat a couple of edibles and go sit your ass down somewhere. Right on down that, somewhere. Well, because that's definitely what it's going to have you doing. But no, I just think it's dope, man, that there's, they follow in suit with other places. Um, and... Yeah, so good luck with that in New York, New York City and New York State. Um, yeah, the, join the hey, join the rest of the country, man. It's yeah, it's not harming anyone. 
Speaking of the legalization, didn't you catch up with one of our OGs? Yeah, man, caught up with the homie GP, man. And me and him sat down and chopped it up briefly. Um, mm-hmm. Talked about his playing career, talked about his his um, medical marijuana line that he started. Um, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I actually went to the launch. Off. I had the I had the pressure. They invited me and flew me out to the launch of uh, when him and Burner, when he actually got with Burner and they launched it. You know the official launch. Yeah. I was actually there. You know, what I mean, right. got to kick it with him, kick it with Junior. They loaded me up, so it's definitely a <laughs> one. <laughs> Already, that's what's up, man. Now nah, it was a good conversation, man. So go check it out, ladies and gentlemen. The glove, Gary Payton. What's up, man? Boy, how you doing? What? I'm good, man. I'm good. What's everything good with you, sir? Everything good, man. Shit, when I got the call saying that you wanted to get on, you know, you my, my guy. So I said, shit, let me jump on there, man, and get out with you, man. I'm I like ready. what you're doing, man. I always doing, man. Doing positive stuff. I appreciate you doing this, man, for these young kids and everything, man, especially for your son. So, you yes, know, sir. make a role model for him, and I appreciate you doing that. You know, I'm that's ready, why man. I got keen to you, man. You know, some dudes I don't really get down with, but uh, yeah. just because you real, real, and you keep it right. Yeah. Yeah, Congratulations you, for all the things you're doing. Yeah, I shall learn from some. I shall learn from the best, man. Looking up at y'all and mimicking certain things that y'all did, man. How you always stayed, stayed solid, no matter what. You know what I'm saying you stayed professional, but you stayed solid and and didn't waver in things, man. So I learned a lot from you, man. Like trust Bro, me, appreciate. Always it. speak up, know what you're talking about, stand firm, care about your guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was yes, a lot. Appreciate man. you. Appreciate you. So, second pick in the '90 draft, played on five different teams, nine time all, nine time All Star, nine time All NBA for um, first, second, or third team. That's a hell of a resume, man. From a kid from Oakland. You know what, Kenya man, I, and we and I've been talking about this, and I've been getting a lot of qu- answers. Just so happened, I've been getting a lot of things about how did you, how does it feel to be a Hall of Famer and stuff. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Coming out of Oakland, California, man, you don't even think that you're going to be that type of guy, man, and make these uh, uh, amount of escalades that I've done. Yeah. And and what happened is, is that I think my father really, really pushed me to this. You know what I'm saying? My father pushed me to be out of the streets, do different uh, situations, and then get my mindset to that. I wanted to get out of Oakland, California, and I wanted to do things to help other people and then come back and have other people follow me. Jason Kidd did a good job when I raised him, and now he's become a Hall of Famer, which you played with for many a years. And I, I just think that we're blessed to just be able to have an opportunity to get out of Oakland, California, and then do what we do. Yeah. And um, I just can't say nothing else, man. I just did what I had to do, and I credit everything to my father. Already, man. No, that's getting out of there, going to school for free, going to Oregon State. Yeah, I'm saying where you did your thing, obviously, to be the second pick in the draft. Uh, That's needless to say. Um, How was your college experience coming from Oakland going to Oregon? Like, how was that for you? Like, how was. Well, can you you know what? It was really different because, you know, I had committed to St. John's University to play with Chris Mullins, Walter Berry and all of them. Okay. Didn't know that, but wow. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Connor Stecker had pulled. He pulled it at the last minute when we were about to make announcement in a gym and he came back all of his assistants wanted me and he came back and said he couldn't take me because he was going to mess up his recruiting process back in the east coast and you know during that time in the 80s you know people wasn't recruiting way over here you know like they're doing now everybody recruiting everywhere getting just the best players and when he took that scholarship back it hurt me a lot and then all of a sudden I just went to my mom and and I told my mom, I said, I, I think I'm not doing something right as a young kid. And being a 16-year-old, 17-year-old, I said, I don't know what really what I'm doing. I'm just going to relax and chill. And she said, no, I want you to be focused on basketball in school because you need to be uh, going to school because your grades are not good enough. And uh, I said, okay, whatever. I said, you, you can make the decision for me now. And what happened was the next day, uh, a couple of schools found out about that. I what had uh, St. John's had did. I had five offers that, that came back and letter of intent that was sent to the house. 
And I told my mom, I just said, hey, you, you know, you make the decision because I think you know the right thing. And she picked Oregon State. And yeah. the reason she picked Oregon State was because of George, uh, uh, um, I mean, Ralph Miller. Because of Ralph Miller was really disciplined and, and, and then the college was a college outside of the city. Yeah. I was a city boy. <laughs> And I was like to run the streets. So yeah, when I went you. to when I went to Oregon State, that ain't nothing in there, man. It was nothing there. It was a big difference. I had to change, and it was good for me. And can you be honest? That's why I stayed at school for four years because I wanted to know about knowledge and I wanted to grow up. I didn't want to be one of them guys, man, to leave you know, when I was a sophomore or a junior, and then all of a sudden I failed to understand how to become a man. And when I became a man and I became what I wanted, I grew up, I grew up a little quicker than what I did. And, and, and it was a great choice for me, for my, 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 my mom. You know, I became National Player of the Year in 1990. Uh, we shared, me and LaSalle, LaSalle Simmons, we shared a couple of awards. And then all of a sudden, you know, I was the second pick. You know, I was you know, right behind Derek Coleman. So that was pretty good for me. Yeah, that wasn't a bad Bad draft to say the least. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. But you, so, so you made a name for yourself. Your first couple of years, uh, you struggled, but you became you defensively, the glove and all that playing in Seattle. Like, how was like being in the, was it North, Northwest, the far Northwest. Northwest. Northwest, Northwest, you're right. Not that far from where you went to school, you know what I'm saying? Right, so right down the street, next, next, yeah, next. So how was it? Yeah. So you going? It was real close, man. So I'm pretty sure you had the support you needed. Mm -hmm. you know I'm saying to come in and continue to play. Um, was George your first coach? He was a king. That's okay. what, you, as you said in the beginning, I struggled in my first two years because of the simple fact that I had a coach, uh, rest in peace. He just died, Casey Jones. Okay. Casey Jones was uh, my first coach. Uh, I really thought that uh, Bernie Bickerstaff was going to be my coach because he's the one who drafted me. When he drafted me, what he did was he went to, he took the head job and the general manager and the president job with the Denver Nuggets and he left me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was, that was really bad because he was recruiting me since I was uh, a junior and he kept telling me that he was going to get me, but it was just a bad situation that, he had to go take, he had to take it. You know, yeah, he was definitely. running everything. He had to take it. So all yeah. of a sudden, um, the first two years was just horrible. Me and Sean Kemp, we we struggled so tough, man. We just didn't do it, man. He uh Casey Jones was playing me in the first and the third quarter, no matter what. He wouldn't even give me a chance. When you come back from a team like Boston Celtics and win championships with Larry Bird, uh, Robert Parrish, uh, Kevin McHale, and guys like that. And yeah. come to youngsters, you got to teach us. He didn't have to teach uh, them. And then he didn't understand it. And then what happened was uh, we went in the office and we went to the owner. They are trying to trade us. And I said, hey, if you want to trade me, good. I said, but I'm not getting an opportunity here. I, I got to play the way I want to play. And then that's when they brought George Carl in. And George Carl brought um, Coach Gergerich in. And Coach Gergerich took me to uh, as his personal uh, protege. And he changed me into people. You know, King, I like to yeah. post up. I never posted up in my ever in my life. He taught me the moves. He taught me them tricks. When he taught me all them tricks, then I started understanding how I could control people. Yeah. And then that's how I went. He started going there. I made an all-star team the first year that George Carl came. And it was just one of them things where, hey, I was, I was, I went on. I, I started blossoming ever since. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of Gerg, like Gerg is the man. Like people don't like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like Gerg gravitate yeah. towards guys like yourself and myself. Like, right. like that time in Denver, like Gerg kept me sane. <laughs> he will do that. He will like, keep you sane. He will. He kept he kept me sane, man. He kept me off the ledge. Like I was on the ledge. He kept me from jumping, so to speak. Right. Right. <laughs> like so. Right. And, so and I believe Gerg, that. Gerg did Gerg he he saved me a whole lot of money in Denver. Like That's he right. saved my career. And he, definitely, man. So and he and he did the same thing with me, Kenya, yeah. because I used to want to kill George ass every every yeah. fucking day, but I wanted to beat his head in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was this jerk, George or Gerg, and you gotta understand, King Gerg came from guys like that at UNLV, yeah. so he knew how to get rid of us. He always went and recruited guys like ourselves coming from neighborhoods where he know that we need to just be let loose. 
Don't yeah. put all that boundaries on us, man. Man, let us get loose, yeah. man. Let us do yeah. what we got to do. And that's why we all, we love him to death because he knew what we, we needed. And, you know, I, I get it, man. Because some nights in them, in them, in them uh, teams, you're going to want to kill somebody. Oh, yeah. Man, was, you're going to want to kill somebody. And I was there. Yo, I almost, and speaking of kill, listen, I was working out in Dallas. Gerg and Steve Hess came down there. They were like training and stuff during the summer. They sent Gerg down there because that's my guy. We're doing a drill. Man, I thought I killed Gerg. Like I, I faked one way, and he went the same way as I, I did. Man, I mm-hmm. ran, I ran Gerg over. Jim, listen, yo, <laughs> hey, everybody in the gym collectively held their breath. It was like a, <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he hopped up. So he was like, "No, I'm fucking good. I'm fucking good. Don't worry about me. I'm good." I was like, "Oh man, look at my house." As him, as yeah. him, you be thinking that he gonna kill him, but he yes. be like, "Man, come on, man, let's yeah, do bring this. it." Bring yeah, it. Bring it. Remember, he had the bags. He be hitting on oh, your arms. Oh, yeah, yes, like, man. Sweating like Gert, a Billy yes. Goat. Yes, sir. That's Gert, man. man. And that's, he, that's he right man. there with you. He right yeah. there with you. So, defensive player of the year, man. Um, only guard to win the award. Only I'm point guard. guard. Only, only point guard, guard to win the win to win the award. Your son recently was named defensive player of the year in the G League. Like, how that make you feel? Like being something that you was known for, um, you put your hat on that every game. Um, how did that make you feel? Can you know what you having a son too and you going to the games and being very involved in games and you don't want your son to be just like you, but we sometimes have to step back and say, you know, he not me. He yeah. not me. You know what I'm saying? This is a different generation and, and things like that. But as you get as you see this and you and you 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 get to feel this and then say, man, he got it a little bit. He been hanging around me, man, and it makes you feel real good because you know how these kids make you feel sometimes. They get yeah. tired of you want to be a oh, man. Why you always with me, man? Let me go do my own thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you think that they don't really be listening to you sometimes yeah, because absolutely. they and they they in their era. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. But as me seeing my son witness this this, uh, this recently, and and he understanding that the defense was there, and that's what he watched as a young kid growing up with me. It makes you feel real good because you'd be like, yo, he was listening a little bit, yeah. and he was do have a little talent in that, and he do have something to to get out with like that. And that's what it is about it, man. And I felt great about my son. And I, I just hope he just keep continuing to try to get better and better so he can get on that next level yeah. and then try to do the same thing for a basketball team. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm glad we know everybody's path is different, man. I think he's he's going about it the right way. He yeah. knows what teams are looking for. He knows what he needs to do in order to get better. And, and from what I see, he's doing that. He's competing at the highest level from when I, I first laid eyes on him over at the Drew League, like seeing him play over there when him and KJ was on the same team. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, KJ like, man, Gary Payton son, play. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, he nice like that. He's like, yeah. I'm like, I need to go see him. I went and saw him. I'm like, oh, and he athletic. I'm like, I didn't know right. he had all that with him. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, he got, nah, he got all that bounce to him. You know, he, yeah, got a, yeah. he got a little bounce to him. Yeah, yeah nah, that's what's up, man. I'm happy to see it, man. And just tell like I always tell them, man, just keep working. Put your head down, man. Put your blinders on, man. Keep working, and it'll work itself out, man. And somebody, because yeah. all it takes is one. Yeah. Like, all it takes is one, man, yeah. to take that, to give you that opportunity. Um, Let's talk some business stuff, man, real quick. I yeah. know you started yeah. your Gary Payton um, cannabis line. Like, is that something that came organically, or you is something like you always wanted to do? It was just you being in Oakland, and there's a lot of business there in the in the marijuana industry now. Well, um, was it presented to you, or like what? Can you, can you, that's a good question, man. A lot of people ask me how did I get into this, and how did this strand become the strand, the number one strand in the, in the country. Uh, the, my, my guy Burner, yeah, which everybody knows from Cookies, he's from here. He's from the Bay Area. He's from San Francisco. Uh, so just so happened, people uh, called me, and you let me tell you who called me and, and picked me to the game. It, 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 it was our boy, you, you know, our boy Stephen Jack. Stephen yeah. Jack called me and said, "Man, uh, man, your strand is the bomb. Can I come out there and get some?" And I said, "Steve, what you talking about?" He's like, man, you know they selling your stuff, man. So I looked it up. I called Burner. I hit Burner and asked him what was up. And next thing you know, he um, he wanted we set up a meeting with each other, set the meeting up. We made a collaboration. 
put it together, put everything out. I put the picture out on the bags and stuff like that. It blew up. And what happened was after that came in, I started telling people about the situation that my mom was about to be, was dying from cancer. And I, I hated her um, seeing her suffer. So I started saying, I want to go into medical uh, cannabis so I can get people who are, are struggling and, and, and get out of their, their, their uh, pain and have them see it. I started getting into it and I gave my mom some stuff. And my mom started laughing for the last part of her life. And yeah. I was glad to see her that way and talking too until yeah, she passed away. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now it's, 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 it's turned into something different. You know, I got my own line with cookies. Uh, it's called a Hall of Gang. Um, I'm giving a lot of players, uh, uh, players of different um, strands. Uh, I got into the edibles. I done got into my own um, my own farm. I done got into a lot of okay. stuff now. Now that it's, it's really really cracking, I'm trying to get a, a a thing now that we got a protocol on concussions with the NFL. I'm trying to do that where we can try to uh, experience some stuff to try to get these guys out of the NFL that had these concussions to start. They're doing the things that they're doing, killing themselves and stuff because yeah. it's so sad to see that. And yeah, uh, I'm I hate to see that, especially an athlete that we are the same. We're the same people and we're athletes. And I don't want to see that keep continuing to happen. So I'm trying to uh, 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 get a, a product now out that we can help do that. No doubt, man. That's what's up. Um, continues doing that good work, man. It's, it's, it's positive. Um, it's a lot of opportunities in the industry. And I see you taking advantage of it, man. But I'm happy to see that the opportunities were, were are there for you guys, man. Because like it's a lot of guys that play when you're doing your era that missed out on a lot of things that could be now. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So for guys to yep. still reach out, to guys like yourself and other people, man, I think it's yeah. dope. Yeah, and, and, I think, and Ken, I think it's dope, you man. Said, you said the right thing, Kenya. It's like people before me, King. You know, uh, Doctor J and Magic and all them dudes. But Magic is a different thing because he did yeah. he to a different uh, uh, program uh, level in his business. But like Dr. J, I just reached out to him and I want to do something with him because these guys didn't make this type of money and you say the right thing. We don't take advantage of what we do and we started off looking at them. Yeah. We raise up to, just like what you said, was you looked, looked, looked up to me when you were seeing the things I did and mocked yourself. Yeah. I did the same thing with Dr. J and George Gervin. You know, yeah. them guys that I looked up to, you know what I'm saying? And I and I and and if I in a platform where I can help them, I'm going to help them, yeah. you know, and then it's just like with you, when you're doing this type of stuff, it's my duty to say, yo, that's my young guy. I got to help him get his stuff off the ground. So we have to support each other and help each other and get each other and be on things like this to make things grow and to make things get a little bit better. And then that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to be that way. For sure. For sure. All right, brother, man, I sure appreciate the time, man. This was, this was very it was a pleasure for me, man, to have you on for one. Uh, like I said, man, I respect you. I look up to you um, in Thank numerous you. ways, man. Uh, continue success um, in life. Stay safe out here, brother. Stay healthy. You know that. And hey, look, man, like I said, man, I appreciate you a lot, man. You know, one right. of the other guys that came in the league, man, and I really respect, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of guys out here that be faking with the thing, and you're not one of them. You're one of the guys that step up and say what you got to say. I love the, what you're doing right now with your platform and everything. Just keep doing it and, yes, and just keep being positive with everything. You know right. how to do it, man. You know yes, how to do it, and that's it. I'm proud of you to be in with this uh, this situation, and you just keep doing it, man. And like I said, like you right. said, stay safe out here and be good. Yes, sir, brother. Appreciate you. Love. Appreciate you.